More on Ebola and the treatments underway. I'm joined by Dr. Jonathan Epstein, a veterinarian and epidemiologist and associate vice president of conservation medicine at EcoHealth Alliance and an expert on diseases like Ebola. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Epstein. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So you are an expert on the so-called zoonoetic viruses, which means viruses that go from animals to humans. That's right. That's right. Now, that this Ebola has been around since 1970, but this outbreak is seemingly much more severe. So tell me about how this one came about. Well, Ebola viruses, we believe, are hosted by bats, different species of bats. And most of that understanding comes from our experience in Central Africa with earlier Ebola outbreaks and evidence linking them to bats. Now, how it gets into people is really important to understand. And I think in the case of this current outbreak, we don't yet really know how the first cases got infected from animals, whether it was directly from bats, as has been suggested, like hunting and eating bats, or whether other animals were involved. So what can be done to prevent this in the big picture if we have communities eating things like bushmeat, be it bats, be it monkeys, be it other resources of, of food for them? Well, it's clear that in many parts of the world, hunting is a means of survival, and that's important. So this is really about uh, providing an understanding for people. I think most people aren't aware that there are risks to their health from butchering animals, from handling wildlife. So first step is to create that awareness and then try to modify behavior so that people can do things a bit more safely and reduce the risk of disease infection coming from animals to people. Well, we have the outbreak happening right now. What are the most likely treatments or vaccines? Where do we stand on that matter? How successful is this potential ZMAP serum? The truth is we really don't know. We've only had experience with two people that have been administered this drug. There are many potential therapeutics and vaccines in the experimental phase. And the discussion right now, the important discussion, is whether we understand the safety and efficacy of these potential treatments. I think it would be risky, even in an emergency situation, to deploy a treatment or vaccine that could do more harm than good. So it's important we do have a sense so of safety. So you're behind maintaining the testing that uh, the U.S. authorities and other authorities have been saying, hang on a minute, we don't want to rush out with these things yet because they could cause more harm than good? I think we need to understand that because it would be terrible if we used these and they actually made people more sick or even killed people. So we do need to have a better understanding of safety. And that's not to say we shouldn't accelerate this research process and get drugs out there right. as soon as possible. Now, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention has raised the alert level to the highest level, alert level one, here in the U.S., Dr. Epstein, how worried, how concerned should we be about this? Look, I think we should be deeply interested in this outbreak and the fact that it's occurring, not just this outbreak in West Africa, outbreaks of zoonotic viruses happen in different parts of the world and will affect us here in America. But I don't think we need to be scared about an Ebola outbreak in the but United it, but States. But it's happening. We are seeing this because of globalization. We're seeing how easy it is for this particular virus to spread. That's exactly why we need to pay attention to where it's happening at its source and take action to prevent these outbreaks from happening in the first place. Understanding how we interact with wildlife that really triggers zoonotic spillover. And so our public health infrastructure is strong enough to contain an outbreak, which is why I don't think we need to be alarmed at here. At this stage, some are calling for screenings at airports, especially from flights coming in from high risk zones. Mm. Do you think that's something we should be implementing? I think that's an important part of our public health infrastructure, yes. If people have a history of travel from areas where Ebola is circulating and they're coming to the United States and they're ill, we should definitely be monitoring for that. So you think that the, the U.S. authorities and other Western authorities really need to step up from a screening point of view? I think it's important that we have screening in place. This is how we're going to catch it early, and this right. is how we're going to prevent an outbreak from happening. Now, this isn't the first zoonotic uh, outbreak, perhaps one with the more severe symptoms, but we've had SARS, we've had H1N1, we've had swine flu. What have we learned from these? What all of these emerging diseases have in common is that originally they come from wild animals. But the reason that they emerge and cause disease in people are really human activities, behaviors that we do that bring us into closer contact with those animals, like hunting, like wildlife trade, agricultural expansion next to forested areas. So we need to understand these interactions better and take precautions to reduce our contact with wildlife so that these types of diseases can't emerge and cause pandemics. All right. Certainly something we're all following very closely. We thank you for your expertise. Dr. Jonathan Epstein, veterinarian and epidemiologist and associate vice president of conservation medicine at EcoHealth Alliance.